All right, we're winding up our week on leadership, and we're just going to look at three more leaders. Obviously, there's so many amazing leaders in the Bible, but we can't cover all of them. So today we're going to look at Noah and Joseph and Paul. So what is our takeaway from Noah? You know what God says about Noah? You are the only one that I saw living righteous life. So what do we learn from him as a leader? That he did what was right and he lived for God even when no one else was. And so you know what? Even Noah's family wasn't living the way they were. And, and I don't know that Noah's family even believed in the whole build the ark plan. But Noah, in the midst of complete uncertainty, completely not knowing what is rain, what is a boat, what is a flood, he just obeyed God. And God saved his whole family. And we're here today because of Noah's faithfulness. All right, so let's look at Joseph. What do we take away from Joseph? Well, Joseph was a leader who endured in spite of his circumstances. Joseph had everything going against him, definitely his brothers. And even his father's love and favor, it worked against him because it made his brothers jealous. We know that Joseph got thrown in a pit. He was a slave. He got thrown in the prison. You know what? Joseph held on to that dream. He held on to the vision, that word from the Lord. And a leader will do that. A leader knows how to hold on to the word that God's given them, no matter what is happening, even if it looks like the exact opposite of what God told you is happening. And that's what Joseph did. He held on to that word. And Paul, Paul, we can even say Paul is a little bit like Joseph because Paul also went through so much shipwrecks and beatings and prison. And Paul held on to the word. But another thing we see from Paul was his passion. Paul was so passionate. And we see in Paul that a leader should passionately believe in what they're saying and what they're doing. It's not just, well, you know, so-and-so told me and so I'm just repeating it. No, nobody wants to follow that kind of leader. But a leader who's passionate about what they believe in Everybody wants to follow them. You know, Paul, he was very passionate about everything. Even before he started following Christ, he was passionate about persecuting the Christians. And I think some of you, you were 100% wholehearted, passionate about living in the world and living for the devil, and you were a wild child. But then what happens, some of us, we live 100% for the world, but then we become secret, quiet, closet, under, undercover Christians. Nobody even knows we became a Christian. They know they don't see us at the bar anymore, but they, they're not really sure what happened. Did you become a vegan? Like, they don't know. You know what? I want to say, take this away with from Paul. Be just as on fire for God as you were for the world. Even more, because you have the king of the universe. You have Holy Spirit God living on the inside of you. So don't let go of that fire. God wants that fire to be unleashed in his kingdom, for his kingdom, as a leader, be driven by that same power, passion, zeal for the Lord that you were for the world. There is no place for apathy. So going the second mile, wrapping up everything we've learned about leadership this week, we want to be leaders who have a servant heart. We want to lead people to God's plan for their life and make them that kind of leader. Release them so that they can do even greater things than we do, that they, we would hold on to God's purpose, that we would have integrity even when no one else is watching. We'll rise to the challenge like Isaiah and we will follow him no matter what it looks like, like Joseph, and we'll hold on to that fire forever like Paul. Most of all, I would encourage you to be like Jesus. He was the best leader of all. 